humans received a broadcast from an outer space civilization. Do you think we should respond? I can tell you it's a very difficult decision. Physics no longer exists. Science is broken. What would you think and do if this happened? It's a good question and remind me to fully answer it. The following is a conversation with Elisa Rabinovici, a theoretical physicist specializing in quantum field theory and string theory. He also serves as the president of the CERN Council. CERN is home to the world's largest particle collider, which revolutionized science. I want to get your thoughts on the Fermi paradox, which is the discrepancy between the lack of evidence of extraterrestrial life and the sheer number of similar planets to Earth. So as you study the universe, how often do you gaze up there and think about this? I don't think that my speculation on the subject is of more value than anybody you would ask in the street. Fermi tried to make it more quantitative. What I can say is that I will not be surprised if there are aliens. When I was a child, I have in me the desire to visit the next galaxy. But I know, given the difficulties to travel faster than the speed of light, the fact that I won't live much more than a hundred years, I am resigned to the fact that this body will not be able to visit the next galaxy. But I do realize that we are in a situation where we can explore with particle physics the energy ocean. And this is something we can do. In the Hugo Award-winning Chinese novel, The Three-Body Problem, an advanced alien civilization remotely tampers with all particle colliders on Earth, so the results no longer make any sense. So top physicists suffer mental breakdowns because they believe that physics as a discipline no longer exists. You're the president of the CERN Council. What would you think and do if this happened? It's a good question and remind me to fully answer it, but I will start by saying five years ago, a good friend of mine told me there is this fantastic book you should read called The Three-Body Problem. I read the book, I couldn't leave it down. I thought it's a fantastic book, so congratulations to the author of this magnificent book. Okay, you can describe it as uh, people getting mental... Uh, say, Is that how scientists would think? Would they have mental breakdowns if something like this happened? Different human beings react different to a crisis. Now, I, let me ask you a question. How come we succeeded to describe nature so successfully by imposing on it laws? We don't know a priori if nature has laws or not. So I think that's a deep question. How come these laws which you described as being broken, how do we know they're there at all? Hmm. We succeed by using mathematics to predict things. So it gives us confidence that we understand. But why should nature study mathematics? Why does it obey the laws? Hmm. So the laws of nature is a human construct. I don't know, because we succeed very much to apply them, and in the scientific method, you make a prediction. It needs to be verified by many groups, and then you have a high degree of certainty that it's correct. Here I give you my two cents on this, is that in order for any species to evolve, it needs to learn. And if things don't repeat themselves, but are totally chaotic, as you described, it's very difficult to evolve because you can't learn. The circumstances change all the time, and the biological time scale will not allow you evolution. I think it would be... My, I wouldn't get a mental breakdown, but I would realize that if this remains, from now on it's going to be very difficult to control our lives. I think this kind of stoicism is also very fitting to uh, the scientific community. So have you given thoughts to the conundrum of a three-body problem? how a three-body star system would work? I have a colleague uh, which works about the three-body problem. It's a very difficult problem, and uh, I think usually we try to isolate those problems we can solve. So the three-body problem is a place which is very difficult. And if you read the book, then you know that uh, it causes a lot of difficulties to make predictions in this situation. If one day, 
humans received a broadcast message from an outer space civilization seeking to establish contact with whoever received the message, do you think we should respond? There will be people which will say, if these guys are like us, we should be careful because they may eventually decide to destroy us. So let's keep away from them. There will be people for which they would say, we are so curious. What would you say? I, I can tell you it's a very difficult decision. You'd be curious and afraid at the same time. Definitely. If things come to that, you take a moment to make your final decision. Maybe more than a moment, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Now, CERN has an antimatter factory. It has produced antimatter in the past, and it remains a mind-bending concept. Many movies have depicted the creation of antimatter. How have scientists been utilizing this discovery? So this was coming out of a theoretical work, and then in the 30s, it was found out that indeed such a particle exists. The challenge is, the moment it hit matter, it annihilates and it becomes mostly photons. It's very difficult to keep it around. Nevertheless, CERN in the late 70s and early 80s built a machine which stored in it a lot of antiprotons. The antiprotons arranged not to touch the walls because then it would annihilate, not to touch any dust inside, high vacuum. And they were used to make collisions with protons to discover new particles, and that was the easiest way at the time to discover new particles. It's a big luck, but it's a big question why in the universe there is so much more matter than antimatter. So if it was the same number, we would not exist. When matter and antimatter come into contact, they annihilate each other. We would annihilate each other and we would have photons around and other particles which are neutral, but I don't see any possibility of a biological life. Mm -hmm. So we are very lucky that there are more matter than there is antimatter. But we still don't know why that is. But why that happens, uh, well, it is a puzzle if you believe that they started with equal magnitude, but nobody told you, that's one of the most difficult questions, what were the initial conditions of the universe? I used an AI chatbot to help me brainstorm some of the questions for this interview. So how do you see the current state of AI now? Because a lot of people are saying that, okay, could this be used in frontier physics research one day? For me, I'm very conservative here. I think about evolution on planet Earth, and how one species took over from another. So when the dinosaurs were ruling parts of the planet, then there may have been some big catastrophe which caused their elimination because they lost energy and food. So their disappearance and the fact that somebody else took over the planet was a chance. But we are the first species which are building our own replacements. And not only that we are building our own replacements, we are putting the energy of all the talented young people in order to be able to perfect this method. At a certain stage, this artificial intelligence may say, these guys, they use too much carbon, they endanger us as artificial intelligence. We owe them a lot, but maybe they are dispensable. My belief is we should be very, very careful. But you've been studying the deepest secrets of the universe for years. But what still baffles you about it? What do you think remains the most intriguing mystery to you? How is it possible you and I can understand the galaxy so far away and go deep into the atom, which is so small? We can put on two slides what are the matter that we know in the universe, which builds the universe, and the equations which dominate the forces between them is another slide. So how come we, these insignificant human beings, are able to understand so much about nature? How, how come? It is quite amazing, huh? For the human race to come this far. Thank you very much, Professor. Please, a pleasure to meet you.